welcome to the show. I am so excited to have joining me today, Maud Mosiak. She's the creator of the Go We Travel app, and she's here to speak to us today about her travel tips and tricks. Thank you so much, Maud, for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited uh, to, to come on and share it's everything a, uh, I learned. <laughs> it's a pleasure to just speak to you, especially just mom to mom. I know you have a four-year-old son and really just the experiences you had traveling with your family all over the world is what inspired you to create this wonderful travel app that helps families. So I'm really excited to speak to you, Maude, and hear all about your, your tips and your tricks for us because travel is just so difficult, especially when you have young kids. What was your experience like that brought you to creating this app for us? So my experience is really about a full-time travel phase of our life that we decided to uh, take on about, gosh, now it's been almost two and a half years or something like that. And, you know, it was funny because I approached this all this experience at first, like a regular vacation. And I discovered that there were a lot of challenges that came with traveling full-time, especially when you associate that with a job and things like that to still, you know, carry on that I didn't foresee. And so I faced those challenges and to quote a few, you know, anything from finding time and a space for your kid to, you know, entertain itself uh, while you are working, mm -hmm. finding a reliable babysitter across the world to just mm -hmm. go on your simple date night. Cause let's face it, you know, you're, you're visiting those beautiful places oh. and then you kind of want to have that little break with your partner to yeah. kind of reconnect. Right. So mm -hmm. those things that I took for granted in my community at home, I didn't have that across the world because we were moving constantly with the van and I looked and looked and, you know, search again about tools that were efficient and easy to find reliable information. When we were arriving, let's say in Portugal, in this little village in the middle of nowhere, I wanted, you know, to know what restaurant was nearby and mm -hmm. that I could bring Luc along. And there were nothing, nothing mm -hmm. dedicated to that kind of travel that you know, non-kid friendly travel, yes. you know, I was not interested to just hit all the kid friendly resort. I wanted to hit places that locals were going and to really experience the culture and bringing a kid along makes it a little, uh, it's not impossible, but makes it mm. a little bit difficult because you always have those factors you have to search for. Mm. Is there you know, a two-year-old, is there a toilet in this, in a restaurant? Because my, my kid is potty training. Let's face mm -hmm. it. It's not going to hold two hours without going <laughs> to the toilet. Right. Yeah. So things, simple things like this became a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Midway through our trip, we were like, well, you know, keep it joking about it. It got to be a nap about this. Come on. Someone mm -hmm. had to do a nap about this. Well, I was tired of searching. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to start one. Mm. And I had no experience, <laughs> no budget. I was in the back of my van with my husband. And I was like, okay, what now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so out of uh, YouTube and Google search and things like that, I developed everything and find a team that is wonderful, that supported me to, awesome. um, you know, things that I couldn't provide, like the technical aspect. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> That's so fun. Oh my gosh. I, I love that story because... That's when uh, you create some of the best things is just like spur of the moment with no money, with no budget, with no time, but there's a need there. Cause you know, now that you're saying it, I kind of resigned to the fact that I figured I just can't travel, that I have a son, especially I have him full time and there's no way for me to really travel without him. So I just figured, well, for the next 18 years or 16 years of my life, I'm not going to really be able to go to Europe and go to museums and all these things. So now hearing about your app and having seen it, it's wonderful because as you were saying, it sort of brings the feeling of a community, but on a global level that, you know, if you need a babysitter and you're traveling somewhere, you can get, you know, reliable reviews and, you know, you have a resource where to go out to dinner. Cause I was, I went up to New Hampshire at one point in Northern New Hampshire, and I was out with someone and there was a family there with young kids. And the person I was out to dinner with said, oh, wow, they're bringing these kids out like after seven o'clock at night to a restaurant. Like, you know, you don't want to go somewhere where you feel that, you know, as a parent that your kids are unwelcome or things like that. So they're really other than this app, I haven't seen a resource that really consolidates everything that tells you 
where can you go? What can you do? Has all these great reviews. And I love the babysitting aspect of it also, because that gives me some hope that, you know, I can maybe go to some sort of exhibit by myself one day when I'm traveling and just have, you know, an hour or two by myself would be a really fun thing to do, I feel like. And a lot of parents would love it also. Yeah, and, and the babysitting comes in so many different forms. We have no idea really what, mm. what is out there until we experience it. And this is what the app is about, right? Like, I didn't know, for example, that in Barcelona, in the middle of the city, there is this awesome uh, little drop-off center held by a mom, and you can just drop your kid for a couple of hours. And they play. And that's it. No question mm. asked. Like, I mean, they make you feel a safety form and all that, obviously, <laughs> but you don't have to be Spanish. You don't have to be, actually, it's held by a woman that spoke English really well. So mm. super comfy. It's all Montessori Bay. So it's beautiful. Mm. It's wood, you know, I mean, it, it, it was, it was amazing. And we dropped Luke off for like, I mean, maybe I sound like a horrible mom, but like for six hours and you had a blast. Well, you know, that, um, that sounds like fun because my son, I used to take him to the similar places, but stay with him. Like there's little, you know, uh, play centers, we call them around here. Mm -hmm. And he loves them. He goes on the trampoline. He goes in the bouncy house, you know. So I can really see that knowing where that sort of a center is, if it's like, you know, a small little drop off type of a place, once you get used to it, I mean, that's a great resource, not only when you're traveling like internationally, but even just around where you are, you know, just yeah. to, to know about all these places. Places. It's kind of gives us like a mom community, but in like a condensed form. And it's absolutely, you, you really nailed it. I think there is a misconception about our app actually being only mm. for traveling parents. Obviously, mm. you're going to use this app way more when you travel because you're out of your community and out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But this app is also amazing for people that relocate often for business, mm. for people that just moved somewhere, for traveling uh, for military families that mm. hop, you know, mm -hmm. around the world on a regular basis. There's so much use out of it that I, I, I could go on and on. But mm -hmm. basically, if you're a parent, you have a kid, you want them to be in the world in some way, shape or form, either through going places, going on hikes, you know, finding reliable care, child care, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. It's, it's all there. And we built that up with that in mind. It's easy. It takes a few seconds to find what you need, where you need it. And so you can spend more time having fun mm -hmm. and more time doing what you do and, you know, parenting, because mm. let's face it. <laughs> It's a full-time job. <laughs> it's full-time. I think studies that are done, they were saying that parents get about a half hour of day and that's counting like, even they are counting like trips to the bathroom and everything. They were saying you get 30 minutes a day as a parent by yourself. Other than that, so, if, you're yeah. not, if you're not working and parenting, that's it. So, you know, uh, it is a full-time job. So anything that makes it easier is awesome. And this is a wonderful uh, sort of resource as well. Now, especially we're in COVID time. So that sort of adds another layer, layer of stress. And I'm really curious, Maude, to hear all of the, the tips you have for us, because right now we're sort of scared of traveling and we don't know how to handle that. Disney World is open. You know, I'm like, oh, I want to go, but is it safe? Is it safe for air travel? What are your thoughts about COVID and how we can keep our kids safe, especially traveling and just in our everyday lives? I think I'm, earning, I'm going to go over a point that a lot of people felt this past year. COVID mm. brought newness, if it's a word in <laughs> English, mm. new, a, a new way to think about everything, right? So mm -hmm. for example, if what you thought was traveling with kids before, um, and, and if, if, for example, if it was, you know, just Disney or just family resort, you know, scratch all that up and open to that new order of family travel, right? So like COVID obviously brings this factor where you want to be far away from the crowd. Mm -hmm. So we at GoWe are huge advocate for underdogs location, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the places you've never heard of or the places you wouldn't think about bringing your kid. Yet, because of that, they're the safest places to go. Right. So I'm thinking on top of my head of this awesome chalet resort in Australia, self-owned, mm. small business mentality. They have like 10 or 12 chalets, mountain views, wood mm. structure to play outside, pool. Really? I mean, you name it. It's and this fantastic. Is, and this is a kid friendly place because I feel like it, it is sounds romantic and beautiful. Yes. And how would you it's know both. that? Yeah. How would you know that it's unless somebody tells you, unless you have the app? Exactly. Mm -hmm. They have a sauna in your room and a kid bedroom and they have a little kids club 
to drop mm. your kid during the day to play, you know? So, mm -hmm. but it's tiny and the budget they have doesn't allow for huge marketing, you know, options, right? So you as a parent in the US would never know about this place really because by the time they reach, the information reaches to you typically, it's like buried in the and Google it, map it's like algorithm. In, yeah, it's like, you know, Google search uh, 200 or it's way down in Expedia. We're never yeah. gonna see it. But yeah. I, I love that this is tailored to kid-friendly places. I, it really goes back to me that feeling like I felt so bad for that family when they're out to that restaurant and people were looking at them with their kids. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna feel like you're not welcome somewhere. So this kind of opens up all the places that you know you want to be at yeah and you and you can narrow with GUI you can even narrow the filter and the social distancing places mm -hmm. so it add an extra component of mm -hmm. safety where you know a family has been there so it's kid friendly mm -hmm. they found a few things like a toilet a changing table mm -hmm. kids menu whatever maybe so you know what you're getting into or what you have to bring with mm -hmm. you and on top of that, they put the filter mask and social distancing. Now you know it's also COVID conscious. Mm -hmm. So you get your, your all your all your info in a matter of mm -hmm. seconds. And, and that that's what parenting is. Uh, parenting tips is about right finding yes. easy stuff at our at our finger at our at our fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and there's also a component of this of supporting small businesses and mm -hmm. uh, lo the local sort of economy. So how is it that businesses get themselves on this app that all of us can find them? Is it just parents that upload places they've been and they give reviews? Or is it the businesses themselves that can sign up to be featured? No, every business that are in the app is watched by a parent, a family mm -hmm. has to added the, the place. Okay, they had to provide at least one photo. So you know that the family went there and they leave a review and we have no, no desire or no plan on increasing monetization in the business side with the review system, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason why the app is not free and, you know, we got a lot of clash at the beginning when we launched, like, why are you not having a free app? Mm -hmm. Because in reality, parent or not, the, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, nothing is free, really. So we wanted to make sure that our parents, our families get an accurate mm -hmm. set of information that is ethical and transparent mm -hmm. and fast. So we didn't want ads to clutter mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that all the businesses had their fair ch chance. Mm -hmm. So the, the reviews that the parents put in the app are true tips, mm -hmm. true, true genuine. Uh, heartfelt you know, info. If you basically getting your, your friend to give you an input, mm -hmm. but in the, in, in the app, because it's another mom, it's another parent that mm -hmm. brought the kid and got the tantrum in that restaurant. And they're all saying, you know, tantrum friendly, <laughs> you know, things <laughs> exactly. like that. So, so it's, a, it's a genuine review. So by doing it that yeah. way, it, it's, it's sticking to being a resource rather than letting businesses pay to feature themselves and have it be like an ad right. space. This is like a genuine place where moms and families and parents to really share their experiences, which is wonderful. I, I love the idea and I, th I think it's wonderful. And I love the idea, especially during COVID of being able to find new places. Cause I keep going to the same farm, the same zoo, anything outside. So the first thing I'm going to do today is tomorrow, my son's home with me. So I'm going to be searching. I have the app downloaded. So I'm going to be searching for something to do that I haven't done before on there. I'm thinking about travel in general, Maud, not just during COVID, but safety is always a big concern, especially where I'm a single mom and traveling with such a young child. There's a concern about like, is someone going to follow us or is you know is my son going to get lost or you know anything like that is there any sort of like safety tips and tricks you have for us or like even like what we should be bringing with us to make you know our our day trips go smoothly or travel tips for us in general about packing or anything like that that will help our kind of uh, travel experiences go a little smoother with our kids so for the single travel mom aspect i definitely it makes me go back to when I was a single girl in Paris, like maneuvering my way around city, the city and, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes in dark coming back from work or whatever, right? I would say it's even more so with a child. You mm -hmm. have a tendency to forget that aspect because you're like, oh, I'm too busy being a mom. Surely nobody's going to try to kidnap me, right? <laughs> but um, always mm -hmm. being alert. You're in a public space. And it doesn't matter, to be honest, if you're in the U.S., if you're in your hometown, in your supermarket, 
or if you are across the world in countries that are, you know, with a bad reputation or whatever. And I'm going to be honest with you, I felt way safer in places like Thailand across the world than I felt in some places in the US. Mm -hmm. So the preconception of safety is often discussed, I think, the wrong way. There's no safe place in the world Mm -hmm. because you have to be alert, right? So that, that would be my first suggestion. Always look at, you know, look behind you once in a while, turn your head, you know, make sure your kid, I, as they get older, understand what a stranger is. Mm. Don't, I, I don't sugarcoat anything with Luke, mm-hmm. you know? And for example, when we took the RV and we were in places where I felt not super, like your gut feeling will tell you, to be mm-hmm. honest, like most of the time, your gut feeling will be an alert. So don't turn that off. Just always listen. And this is the perfect time when your gut feeling ring, rings a bell to tell your child, look, I'm going to ask you to hold my hand really tight right now. And we're not going to let go. And if I scream, stop, you stop. Okay. Let's make sure we understand that this is for safety. Mm-hmm. It's not because I'm trying to be mad at you. or mean to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So Things like that. That's how I taught him to um, not cross the road Mm -hmm. randomly. That's how I told him to hold my hand in large public space with lots of crowds, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and now at four, he's very aware of this. And I think it's a great way, travel is a great way to instigate safety measure to your children. Mm -hmm. They will understand what safety is, safety measure is, and really be aware about it if you bring them out of their comfort zone Mm -hmm. right so really don't hesitate the travel aspect Mm. single mom or not is going to always bring new things to be learned by your children and for you too and it's it's much better this way i think because Mm. if you if you i mean i believe that's my belief if you shelter your children in one specific spot their whole life they don't know what's out there. So when the day they turn 18 and they go into the world, they're not going to stay. I mean, rarely they're staying mm-hmm. right where you Alert. are. And yeah. they're going to they're gonna discover all these dangers mm-hmm. and they're not going to be equipped for it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So traveling with a child, as a single mom especially, um, it's, it's a great aspect to, to install safety measures for you and for your child because you start to learn about mm-hmm. them. It's a teachable moment, just how to yeah. conduct themselves out in the world, how to be aware. Absolutely. And then at the same time, of course, travel in general is, is just expanding their, you know, their horizons. It's a real true thing that you're, you're giving them, you know, insight into different communities and all these different cultures. Yeah. And, you know, that must've been a big motivator for you and your family, because you had, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your trip. So you took your family in the car and you traveled all over Europe, right? Is that what it was? It was started? a small RV. Yeah. Essentially. Oh, okay. Um, it's like an old, uh, European RV. So yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it was not a car, but, uh, it, it had the kitchen and the toilets and all that, but mm-hmm. yeah, essentially. And, uh, we, mm-hmm. we parked places. Like, uh, I remember this night we parked and we boondocked uh, in Spain, in front of this magnificent beach. And I felt, I felt uneasy, to be honest, the whole mm. night, right? So I closed all the windows. Like my husband was like, leave the windows open. I want to see what's the breeze. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I told them, I said, do not put the feet down, right? The, to, to anchor the van. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep it on and keep the keys beside you. And if I, if I hear something, cause mm-hmm. he sleeps like a lot. If mm-hmm. I hear something, I'll wake you up and then we drive, right? Mm-hmm. So that, so like you can, you start to put yourself into those moods. Nothing happened, mm-hmm. but it, it really brought me to understand that you're, you're not, a, I mean, you, you don't, you're, you're not home. And, and, and so you, you have to be open to everything that's around you, beauty mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, safety aspects. There's, there's the multiple components of it. <laughs> and, and for your kids, do you think that, uh, what was the feedback you got from your kids about all this travel and taking them all over? Did you take them to museums and different things like that? Do you think that it expanded sort of their, their mindset? Yeah, I think I spoiled him a little bit, to be honest. Now he cannot stay in place. I mean, that's like one of the, the you have to watch out if you're not ready to have a travelers on your, a traveler on your hand. But yeah, it's, it's, he is so open-minded 
of experience and he gets so excited that I use that now that we're settled for a while. I use that, I use that as a motivator. So for example, you know, he has a difficult week or, you know, things like that. I will be like, well, don't forget Saturday, we're going to go for the whole day. We're going to take the car and we're going to pack and we're going to go visit this museum or this new town, you know? And yeah, he, he has a really deep love for hotels for some reason. <laughs> like he gets so excited. We, we had our electricity shut off the other day and I had a meeting the next morning. So I told my husband, I'm like, well, uh, we're going to need to go to a hotel. And it was like, we have a dog. So we mm. chose this motel. Mm, it was it kind dog. of, yeah, it was grungy. And <laughs> it, it was not really fun for us. But Luke was so excited. Oh mm. my gosh, the motel experience. <laughs> you put the explorer mindset into him. So now he just wants to kind of explore it all. Yeah. Bad, good, everything. That's yeah, nice, yeah, uh, oh, either, yeah, I don't think he even realized uh, something can be bad in uh, it was the motel for him. <laughs> it's like different. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It's a bonding experience for the whole family. Totally. Really. Anything you do. I remember as a kid, we had some, ex- like I'm thinking just in Disney in general, because that was where we went the most often. Sometimes we went, we stayed at five-star resorts, beautiful, you know, it had everything. Sometimes we went, because we went like almost every year. Sometimes we went, my family had maybe harder times. And there was one time we went, we drove down to Disney all the way from Boston to Florida. We threw a bunch of groceries in the trunk, like from the grocery store you know, stuff to make sandwiches and cereals and all these things. And we just, you know, that was our pretty much our trip. We had like a a little bit of luggage with us and we kind of drove down. We stayed at like a cheap place. And that was one of my favorite trips because all I remember from it is the fun times of making sandwiches in the car, the fun times of singing those songs with our feet up on the dashboard, you know, the, the laughs that we had when like, you know, the car was malfunctioning on the way down or like all these fun things. That's where the kids remember is those experiences, whether they're bad, good, rich, you know, on a budget, anything like that. It's just getting out there and having that bonding time with them. And it just, it not only expands your kid's mind, but it just, you know, creates all these beautiful memories for them to hold on to for the rest of their lives and to bond you all as a family. So I think getting out there is so important. And we have to remember that when we're coming out of COVID now, because we can, you know, I think we, are all getting really comfortable with being sheltered and staying home. And that's Mm -hmm. been great because we've been able to reconnect in a different way. But now we also have to be cognizant that we're coming out of this year, COVID, and to get back out there and to reconnect with everyone because, you know, that's really important too, that we're kind of expanding our community a little bit, you know, and bringing more people into it. So I I love the idea of of travel for that sense. And I know, Maude, also as a business owner and as a mom, you do speak a lot to the business community because this is, uh, you know, a startup company and it's really taking off and you've done a wonderful job with it. And, you know, I know other moms are inspired by you and other entrepreneurs, you know, taking on new challenges and raising a family. What tips do you have for us for women out there who have this, these small ideas, you know, what seems small and they want to maybe start a business for it and do what something what like what you're doing and balance their family and all of that with it. What tips do you have for us for that? Oh gosh, (laughs) broad (laughs) subject. (laughs) All right. So the first thing I want to say is I started this app in the, in the technological world, female are not underrepresented. Mm. So I have a strong passion to inspire women Mm -hmm. to look at places in, in the business world that are typically held by men apps is one of those you know things like that there is no better person placed to offer what you are going to offer because you are offering it so this is what I had to I had I struggled at first and I had to overcome is the fear to not be good enough and Mm. I think as women especially and mom we are conditioned for some reason with this horrible guilt at Mm. every step of the way, right? So it's like guilt to leave our child behind, guilt to not being a good spouse and or not supportive enough because we're trying to accomplish what we want to do, guilt to ourselves because we put ourselves aside to be a supportive wife and mom, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like this always this balance with our guilt and in the business world it comes back 10 times because you always feel like you're not good enough to deliver something you're not expert on or Mm -hmm. things like that and that's that that's what I felt at the beginning and I 
luckily encountered amazing female mentor and they taught me look mm -hmm. you're good enough because what you're bringing to the table mm -hmm. nobody is doing it and if mm -hmm. they do it they might do it in their own way but what you're bringing is different because it's you you're bringing it right so that's the first thing i would recommend mm -hmm. i would recommend to stop being guilty to wanting to do something mm -hmm. go for it to quote uh, Pamela Perkerman, that is an amazing mentor that I really uh, followed from the beginning uh, of my entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey. There is no, I mean, there's only opportunity missed that you're not taking, right? Mm -hmm. So just go for it. Stop, stop wondering mm -hmm. if it's going to impact your child or your husband, mm -hmm. or if you're not good enough, because you know what? Everybody will adapt around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like one. The second is find your tribe because mm -hmm. in those moments of doubt and guilt trips that you put on yourself they'll be the one lifting you up there will be mentors to guide you and mm -hmm. inspire you because they're doing it right mm -hmm. so 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 stop the guilt find your tribe and 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 just have a passion you should mm -hmm. always start a business for the right reason which is mm -hmm. the reason that motivates you um i usually go the only time i advise people to not start a business which is probably like maybe a couple in my whole life is the people that only do this because not because they believe in a mission be mm. behind their idea but because they just want to make a buck mm -hmm. right you are going to make a buck and you should it's there's no shame in wanting to be millionaire or wanting to make it Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be the solo motivator because you're going to encounter so much uh, walls that mm -hmm. that that motivation is just going to go out of the window very quickly mm -hmm. and you'll give up. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave on that subject. I'll just leave you with that thought. As a mom, you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. by default. That's because true. what you do is raising a human being with mm -hmm. zero budget and zero foundation. Like think of your kid to, mm -hmm. a, as a business for a minute. Mm -hmm. It might sound weird, but oh, that, that child is born with nothing, right? He has no conception of the world. He has no, no prerequisite or something. And then you're making it every day. You're making him or her the person that, you know, they're going to become. So you signed up for that already. <laughs> so That's true. Become, yeah, becoming an entrepreneur is such a little leap to take, really, because a business is a baby. Yes. It really is. Yeah, I love that. I've spoken with a number of, uh, of women who are, you know, uh, every day speaking to moms about starting businesses and everything. And I love the way you put it that, you know, you, you are already an entrepreneur just by having your child and raising them. That's like a business, you know, and it can, contains all the same components and you, you really follow all the same steps. So, you know, that should give you the confidence to kind of get out there and, you know, find what, as you said, something you're passionate about and just start it. Don't think 10 steps ahead. How is this going to impact my life? How is it going to impact everything? And also what I love what you said also about finding your tribe, because that's been really important that I found also is there's this great big mom community, especially we have all these resources with social media and ways to connect. That's how me and me and you met as well. Um, and, you know, it's just about supporting each other. So once you realize how many moms are out there ready to support you and whatever you're passionate about and ready to share resources, tips and, you know, their struggles and their lessons and things like that, it's really a beautiful thing. So I love that advice for us, Maude. Thank you. And I do have one more, more question for you before, before we let you go more of a practical question. And I'm curious to know the answer because I have a two-year-old son and I have not taken him on a plane since he was maybe three months old. So I'm like, you know, terrified that he's going to be screaming and crying and how do I entertain him? And how do I really travel with him? You have a four-year-old son. What do you recommend for me? Because I'm already trying to plan my post-COVID travel. <laughs> well, so to answer that question, I want to backtrack on a question that always comes up to me and that mm -hmm. is relevant. Um, they, a, a lots of parents come to me and say, hey, what do you think about the perfect age to start traveling? Mm -hmm. I'm like, as long as the person birthing the child is <laughs> ready to go. Because <laughs> I really, the earlier you start, the mm -hmm. easier it will be. It mm -hmm. will become their normal. So mm -hmm. never think it's, 
too early to bring your child along. I did a 18 hours road trip with a two months old in the back. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. He was sleeping the whole time. (laughs) It was great. It was easy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So never, never stop yourself because of timelines in their life. Mm -hmm. So coming back to your your situation and like you're like the two-year-old phase and then the, the plane ride. I, I want to share a little quick story. I was mm-hmm. in the airplane when he was 12 months, just turning 12 months, all by myself, right in the middle of a teething tantrum episode. Mm-hmm. And I got dirty looks. I got a, even a death threat from one of the passenger in first class I was not in first class but like she came out of the first class cabin area and she was like you should muffle that kid like someone should do something about this and I looked at her I I think I think like my eyes at this point were probably loaded Mm. and anyway I reported to the stewardess and all that you Mm -hmm. know but came from that a support from the community around in the airplane Mm. of grandmothers and mothers because Mm -hmm. they might not travel with their kids at the moment but you would be amazed of how many parents fly right Mm -hmm. so without their children for business or whatever so don't assume that they do not understand Mm. it doesn't say that you should leave your kids be disrespectful (laughs) of other passenger if you can help it but come on you know 12 months two years old we all Mm. know what that is Mm -hmm. so don't feel sorry for bringing your child along in your travel journey because it's a public space. If people mm. don't want to hear kids that's true. live and experience, they should stay home. Yeah. That's gotta, my personal... We, we got to get rid of that mom guilt that we even have. You know, Absolutely. I have that mom guilt. I'm like, I can't take him to the restaurant. No. I can't take him to the airplane. I can't do these things. You it's know? a public sp- yeah. place. A public, right. is public place is specifically that. Mm. It's and our kids to- are part of the public. <laughs> they are part of the public. And you're doing yeah. a huge disservice to the public by mm. keeping your kids sheltered because when they turn 15, they're going to be obnoxious in the public, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. If you teach them to be part of our society, and that means being quiet sometimes and, and respectful and not mm-hmm. kick the seat in front of you, because we all went through that, you know, that let, let it be it. Let it, mm. be, let it be. Every trip should be an experience. Yes. So, and they will learn along the way. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't mm-hmm. fret. Don't fret. And then when you land, you open the GoWe app and you find out what family ah, friendly, act- friendly yes. activity you're going to do. <laughs> you're going to <laughs> take them to the park. <laughs> kid friendly uh, cafe with whatever yeah. you need, a glass of wine or a nice coffee. Oh, what, that sounds tea. perfect, doesn't it? Oh and, my gosh. Yeah. And let them blow steam. But the, the trick that we use with our son when we fly and it's a long flight, one, choose the flight, the overnight flight. Those are those mm. are bonus point for your parenting journey through the flight, especially as a single mom. It's mm, good, good to know. Uh, yeah, the tantrum journey that I got was on an afternoon flight. Okay, so overnight. So, yeah, overnight is great. Two, prepare them. They're never too young for visu- visualization. I love to send visualization to Luke before the trip. So what I do, and now I actually do it with the GoWe app, but what I used to do before the GoWe app, I used to print pictures of places he was motivated to see. Hmm. So for example, we fly to, let's say London, right? And I'm like, okay, well, what are we gonna do for Luke in London? We're probably gonna go visit a zoo or this awesome cool exhibit for kids or something like that. I'll print a a picture of it, or I can just pop it out on, on the, on the GUI app and like blow up the picture. And then I would show it to him and explain to him what it was. Even now, now that he gets older, like videos are a huge bonus for him. He loves to see like the inside of where we're going. Hmm. And during the flights, when he was getting antsy, I used to remind him, Hey, if you last another two hours of you know, being nice and everything, you'll see, we're going to get there and we're going to do this. Aren't you excited to go to that (laughs) zoo? I'm so excited. So like divert their tantrum. They're doing the tantrums in the airplane because they're either tired, bored, or confused. Mm. 
a lot of time communication goes a long way. So visualization for kids is a mm-hmm. huge, huge asset and shouldn't be discounted. Bring that mm-hmm. picture along, mm-hmm. bribe them with fun. Because you know, as an adult, this is what makes us going. Mm-hmm. If you think a minute of why you are allowing yourself as an adult to sit in a tight airplane with a bunch of stranger that is probably sometimes not super smelling super good, is because you know what's coming at the end. Mm-hmm. It's worth the journey because you're like, oh, I'm going to sit on that lounge chair in front of that pool. Or, oh, I'm going to visit that city and learn so much. Things I've always wanted to see, right? You need to give that to your kid. Mm, I love it. Those are great tips for us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so sure. much, Maude, for, uh, for sharing all this with us and for sharing your resources. I love your app. So keep it going and keep inspiring Thank moms you. to follow their passions also and keep traveling with your kids. And can't wait to you know follow along with the pictures and everything you share on your Instagram of your family trips and all of that. It's so fun to see. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, if anybody needs more info, uh, feel free to DM us on Insta, either uh, Bitsy or I are, are always on there. If you don't know if the, Go- if the GoWe app is the value you need, it's okay. You try us out. We have a free trial, but we mm. also have a free community you can join and just get inspired. And uh, we always love to share those tips with you. So mm. yeah, don't hesitate. Is the free community on Facebook that we can join? No, it's actually on our website. You can join to it. And we send a weekly inspo of best location of new locations and best locations that just were added in the app. And then uh, every time we have like a, a blog out, a guest post, you know, or tips to share for, you know, something seasonal, we'll put it out mm, there. Too. That's perfect. And what is the name? What is the website address for us? Sure. It's goe.com. So it's a G-O-W-H-E-E.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maude. I hope to talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks.